people of YouTube, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be discussing what is arguably considered the most beautiful tortoises on the planet, the star tortoises. There are two different species of star tortoise, and I happen to have both of them right here. This is the Burmese star tortoise, scientifically known as Geocolone platinota. And this smaller one right here is the very famous, very popular Indian star tortoise, Geocolone elegans. In this video, we're gonna go over a fairly quick description on how to tell the differences between these two amazing tortoises, and we'll go a little bit into their range and other specifics. The Burmese star tortoise, which I'm showing you guys first, has been through quite a lot when it comes to their species. They occur in Myanmar, which is in Burma, and they're found in deciduous forests. The Burmese star tortoise is critically endangered and has even been considered in recent times functionally extinct. That means there's not enough of them left in the wild to do their species any good. Despite the grim situation for them in nature, this species has proven to be very prolific and popular in herpetoculture. Distinguishing a Burmese star tortoise from other star tortoises is really not all that hard and what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've put some of that Vita shell made for turtle shells on theirs to brighten them up, make them glossy so you can actually see their markings. It's not something you should do regularly, but used in moderation, it's safe. You'll notice the flower petal-like pattern on the carapace scoots of this incredible tortoise. With the carapace being colored dark brown or even black, some are chocolate colored, these bright yellow to cream colored flower petal patterns really stand out. One of the things you're gonna notice about them is that the width of these markings, which can also be referred to as star-like markings, can vary. Some of them can be very thin, some of them can be kind of wide like this individual right here. And what you're gonna see is on a lot of the scoots of the carapace, you'll see six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's not on every scoot, but it's very distinct on the scoots that you find it on, like these vertebrals right here, and even the coastal scoot here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Really looks like a flower petal. When it comes to the skin coloration of the Burmese star tortoise, we're typically looking at some degree of yellow. It's usually pale, but it can be pretty golden. Sometimes it can even have a little bit of an orange hue, but for the most part, you're looking at kind of a pale yellow coloration with shadowed areas on it. And that goes for the head, neck, front, rear limbs, and tail. When we look at the classroom of the Burmese star tortoise, you kind of notice these chevrons, which is similar to both the Egyptian and marginated tortoise, on an otherwise light colored background that matches the star pattern of the carapace or even the skin. Burmese star tortoises are the largest of the star tortoises on average, with females exceeding 13 inches and males exceeding 9. They don't all get that big, but most of them are gonna get pretty close. You can see just how big an adult female Burmese star tortoise can get, and she may continue growing. These tortoises actually lay very large clutches of eggs when we compare them to the Indian, which we're gonna get to next. This female is capable of laying 15 to 16 eggs in a single clutch. And folks, they are not small. They're pretty big. They're almost the size of a golf ball. So moving on to our second species of star tortoise, we have the one and only Indian star tortoise, or is it really the one and only? The Sri Lankan star tortoise, which you may hear a lot of people bring up, is actually not a real subspecies or separate species than the Burmese or Indian. It's a geographical variant of the Indian star tortoise that tends to get very large, similar in size to the Burmese. The stunning Indian star tortoise is found in India and Sri Lanka, and it's found in semi-desert grasslands and also moist deciduous forests. So there's a little bit of a variation there where they can be found. Although Indian star tortoises are not critically endangered or functionally extinct, in some cases like the Burmese star just yet, these guys are in trouble and they have recently been moved to CITES Appendix 1, which gives them the utmost protection. One of the main differences you might notice right off the bat about these tortoises is their size when compared to the Burmese. Now again, the Sri Lankan variant may get very large, but on average, the Indian star tortoise, Geocolone elegans, are gonna reach around or between four and a half, five inches to six, six and a half for males, and anywhere between six and eight to eight and a half inches for females. 
Don't forget, with any tortoise species, there's always a lot of variation, but those are your basic size when it comes to these guys and girls being fully grown as adults. When it comes to the carapace markings of the Indian star, you might say that we're seeing a little bit more of a star-like pattern, and they will typically have more lines than just six of them on the carapace scoots. If you look at hers right here, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, with one, two, three, four, five, six connecting, which is similar to the Burmese star. Also like the Burmese star, their carapace rays or lines or star-like patterns can be thin or they can be very thick. It's all variation. On average, the Indian star tortoise is going to have a little bit more of an arc or dome to the carapace than the Burmese star, which is sometimes referred to as the flatback tortoise. You can look right here and actually see just how domed some of these are. Pay no attention to that blue dot though, that's just safe paint that was put there by the breeder. But you can see what I'm talking about with that general shape of these amazing tortoises. When it comes to their plaster, and interestingly, that star-like pattern actually continues onto it, unlike the Burmese star. One last thing that's worth noting about the Indian star is its skin color. It still has that pale yellow ground color to it, but they have pretty distinct dark spotting, and that can be found on the head, neck, limbs, and tail. You might also notice a little bit in the difference of the shape of the head between the Indian and the Burmese, with the Indian having a little bit more of a cusp and pointed beak, the Burmese kind of has more of a rounded face. Again, all subject to variation. When it comes to telling the difference between male and female star tortoises, it's pretty much the same for both Burmese and Indian. Regardless of how big they get, the male is going to be the smaller and the female is going to be the larger of the sexes. She can sometimes be as large as two to three times bigger than him. The female is going to have a short stubby tail with a puckered vent. The male is gonna have a longer tail, very long, that actually wraps around to the side. He's gonna have a spike at the end of that, and it's not totally understood why they use these. It's the same case with Herman's tortoises. It could be to stimulate the female's cloaca region during courtship, but that's that. And also, when you flip them over, which you should only do briefly, the male is gonna have that classic concave plastron where the female's gonna be flat so that he can carefully fit perfectly right on her back for breeding successfully. So for comparison, let's put them right up against each other so you guys can see a little bit more of the clear difference. We've got a full grown reproductive male Indian star, full grown reproductive male Burmese star, full grown egg laying female Indian star, and full grown egg laying female Burmese star. This animal can lay up to 15 eggs, maybe even 16 in one shot, whereas this animal with her size will probably lay max six. When it comes to those carapaces, we can see what I was talking about earlier in the differences of the markings. The Indian has more of those lines or actual star-like pattern, whereas the Burmese has the flower petal-like pattern. Again, they could be thick, they could be thin on either type, but you can see there's kind of more of like isolation to the Burmese star's markings, whereas the Indians just really kind of go crazy, depending on the individual that you're looking at. When you look at the skin, head markings, legs here of both types, you can see the Burmese star has more of that uniform pale yellow skin, whereas the Indian has that yellow skin, but also has those distinct dark patches or even spotting. Like I said earlier, the Indian star is typically gonna have more of an arc or a dome to its shell, whereas the Burmese might even be almost flat-backed, which is their second name. Now, unfortunately, some of these tortoises were raised a little bit too dry, so you can see pretty significant pyramiding on some of them, so I'm sorry if they're not the best examples, but fun fact, especially the Indian star tortoise can actually pyramid naturally in nature because of the arid landscapes they come from, and the ones that occur in the more deciduous, moist forests will actually be smoother than those found in those desert-like landscapes because of lack of water. Last but not least, folks, you can see the clear differences in the plastrons between the Indian star and the Burmese star. And again, if you're looking at Sri Lankan stars, if you have true Sri Lankans in your possession, you're going to want to follow the markings of the Indian if you're comparing it to a Burmese to properly differentiate them. So even though there are only two species of star tortoise, there are other turtles and tortoises in the reptilian world that have star-like patterns. We've got a juvenile Florida box turtle here, an adult female ornate box turtle, and of course, the famous Madagascan radiated tortoise. You can see they all have those similar dark colored shells with yellow star-like patterns on them, but folks, they are not star tortoises. This is a radiated tortoise. It is not even in the same genus, and these two are, of course, those famous 
members of the American box turtle family. So although this is not a care video, it's really meant to tell the differences between the two types of star tortoises, I did want to touch on it a little bit, but come summer, we will be able to show you guys way more of how we take care of them. Both star tortoises do come from semi-arid habitats, even when they're found in those deciduous forests. So not unlike the radiated tortoise, they do come from landscapes with high sand content and they are very well drained. So if you keep them outside, which you absolutely can do in certain parts of the world, even New Jersey right here, make sure you make their pens on very well drained ground. You might want to replace that soil with high sand content, kind of mix it all together. And just as important, you wanna make sure that the animals have full access to the beneficial sun. Indoors, star tortoises also do well, but they do need a lot of space. Even the small Indian does. Appropriate lighting, hiding areas to make sure that the animals can escape each other if they're kept together are very important. So is a proper diet. Now in this video, we fed these tortoises some romaine lettuce and curly endive, which they get here and there, but weeds, grasses, and flowers should make up the content of their diet. We'll touch on all of that again once that warm weather returns, and we'll give you guys plenty of tips on how to not only keep them, but breed them as well. So I hope you all enjoyed this video about star tortoises. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see more species specific videos. And uh, myself, and maybe this little Burmese star tortoise will see you in an upcoming one. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon for notifications, and we'll see you soon.